Okay. So it looks like we can get started now. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, so my name's Jared and I'm from Recycle Right. Um, and before we get started, I'd like to just do an acknowledgement of country. Um, so I'd, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we're gathered here today, um, the Wajdak people of the Noongar Nation. And I'd like to pay respect to their elders, past, present and future. Um, so, so yeah, thanks, thanks for tuning in everyone. Um, it is National Science Week. Um, and so in celebration of National Science Week, the topic this year is um, food by design. Um, and so we thought it'd be a good opportunity to host a webinar that focuses on food waste or FOGO, FOGO processing, so food organics and garden organics. Um, so we're, we're joined with some special guest speakers today. Um, sitting next to me, we've got Tim Yue, who's the CEO of the Southern Metropolitan Regional Council. There Hello. he is. How are you going? <laughs> Very smooth. Um, we're also joined, uh, we've got Paul Curtis, who is the, the director of Pure Earth, and we've also got um, Bill Marchbank, who is the waste management consultant at Pure Earth. And we're also joined by Joe Kalachi, um, who is the business development manager at Go Organics. Um, so thank you all for joining us. Um, so yeah, so Pure Earth and Go Organics, these are the, the SMRC's um, external composting partners. So um, just so you know. Cool, so just a bit of housekeeping before we get started. If you could just keep yourselves muted for now, um, just while the presentations are going on. Um, if you wanna turn off your video, if you, this webinar is being recorded. So uh, if you don't want your, your face to be the shot, just turn off your video, otherwise you're free to leave it on. Um, feel free to type in as, as many questions as you like during the presentations. Um, once all the presentations are finished, will allow for a bit of extra time for some questions and answers as well and further discussion. Um, so just a bit of structure for the, the webinar today. So I'm just gonna give a quick overview of the, the different bin systems um, that are operating throughout the Perth Metro um, region. Um, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Tim, who will be talking on behalf of the SMRC, the SMRC's perspective. Um, and then we'll head over to um, Bill and Paul from Pure Earth. And then last but not least, we'll have Joe Kalachi um, giving his presentation as well. Cool, so I'm just gonna share my screen. All right, so the Perth bin system. So at the moment, um, there are a bunch of different Perth bin systems operating in Perth. Um, so as you can see um, at the top, we've got the two bin systems. So that's your dark green littered general waste bin, your yellow littered recycling bin. And this service um, also offers, uh, often offers a bulk verge collection. But as you can see on the right hand side, the typical recovery rate for that bin system is about 33% of, of diversion from landfill. Um, so going down the list, we can see there's the three bin garden organics go system. So this new bin that's added, that's the, the garden organics bin. Um, you can see by incorporating this extra bin and um, recovering the garden organics, the diversion rate actually increases. So it goes up to 48%. And then right down at the bottom, we've got the three bin food organics, garden organics, FOGO system. Um, so with the FOGO bin, this also incorporates food waste as well. Um, and so as you can see on the right hand side, this has an even bigger diversion rate um, from landfill at 66.5%. So, yeah, for those who don't know about the three bin FOGO system, um, you can see on the left hand side, recycling bin stays the same. So, we're after our steel and aluminium cans, unshredded paper, and cardboard that is flattened. We also have our you know, plastic bottles and containers that we're after, and glass bottles and jars, of course. Um, so, in the middle, that's the FOGO bin. So, as you can see, that's all organic material that we're after in that bin. Um, so that includes things like food scraps, um, garden organics, and even things like dog poo and cat poo and kitty litter, as long as it's organic. Um, and then on the right hand side, that's the general waste bin. So that's for things like um, hygiene products, polystyrene, foam trays, um, and of course, nappies. Um, and so the materials from that bin um, just go straight to landfill. So the reason why councils are rolling out the new three bin FOGO system 
is, as you can see at the bottom, it's to do with the waste avoidance and resource recovery strategy uh, for 2030. So basically the, aim, uh, the, the statewide target is to recover 70% of waste by 2025 and 75% by 2030. So as councils roll out to the new three bin FOGO system, um, we'll be able to achieve those recovery rates. So as you can see at the moment um, throughout WA, there's 12 local governments that are, are currently providing the three bin FOGO service. So there's five within the Perth and Peel area. So you can see we've got the city of Melville, city of Fremantle, the town of East Fremantle, city of Bayswater and the town of Bassendean. And then there's also seven FOGO local governments outside of the Perth and Peel region. So that's city of Albany, who are currently rolling out the FOGO system, city of Bunbury, the Shire of Augusta, Margaret River, Shire of Cape Howe, um, Shire of Collie, Shire of Donnybrook, Bellingup, and Shire of Harvey as well. Great, so I'm just going to hand it over to Tim Ua right now. Thanks, Josh. All right, hello everybody. Good morning and welcome. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, who is the SMRC? Well, we're a local government authority. Uh, we're representing the three councils in the southern region of Perth that you can see on the screen. Um, that's the city of Fremantle and Melville and the town of East Fremantle. Uh, and we're responsible for maximising resource recovery and minimising climate impact. Uh, and we do that by, by providing best practice recycling solutions with ethical supply chains and high recovery rates. Um, the collective councils have implemented three bin FOGO, food organics, garden organics systems, through to 55,000 households. Uh, which is a significant step in towards achieving the state waste strategy. Um, the SMRC operates a significant project called the Regional Resource Recovery Centre, which is based in Canning Bay, Western Australia. Uh, and on, at that site, we have three um, important facilities. And one you can see on the uh, process is the yellow top bin, which is all the recyclable material. Um, and it's called a, a MRF or a materials recovery facility. And that can process up to 100,000 tonnes per annum of um, curbside collected recyclables. Um, the other significant component is a FOGO processing facility, which is a licensed facility, um, and it can process up to 109,000 tonnes per annum. And we're currently processing there on behalf of our three member councils, and we have significant capacity to increase that to service other parts of the metropolitan region. We also um, collect bulk green waste as a separate item. So um, householders in those uh, council areas put bulk verge waste out once or twice a year onto their verge. That's collected, brought to us, and we shred that up uh, and we sell it to other reprocessors who turn it into uh, soil additives, mulches and composts. Just waiting for my screen to turn over. Might need a couple of clicks. Gareth's going to give me a bit of technical assistance here. So um, it's going to let it load. <laughs> bear with me. All right. So we, I'm just going to speak a bit more about the um, for the, the, the three bin system and how it impacts um, a, a number of things. So the materials recovery facility, as Jared pointed out, what goes in that yellow top bin is important. Um, it's the plastic paper, cardboard and aluminium. Uh, and that's currently processed, and then we sh ship it to markets throughout South Southeast East Asia and Australia. Glass is processed solely in WA and is used as a sand re replacement in construction, um, and it goes into things like road bases. Um, FOGO processing facility, um, that's where the organics are processed, um, and we screen out any contaminants that are inadvertently placed in the bin. We get very low levels of contamination, around 2.6%. Uh, zero is good, but that's currently what we get. And we screen out that material before sending it to Pure Earth uh, and go organics facilities. And they go through a final processing uh, process to turn it into a fit for purpose, quality assured product that's available to the general public, farmers, landscapers, and a variety of urban markets. The red bin, that's the bad bin, that's where um, all the things that aren't readily recyclable, like nappies, toothbrushes, 
um, uh, toothpaste tubes, um, polystyrene containers. They're all the things that um, we can't currently recycle or compost, so they go in the red bin and they are placed in a landfill um, south of Perth. The future of the landfill um, disposal is going to change to energy from waste and that's going to happen in about 12 months time. So that material will be, instead of going to a landfill where it generates methane, um, which is a, a greenhouse gas that's 28 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Um, and so all, the alternate method of putting it through a energy from waste facility will improve that position. Some of the impacts that are going to happen to recycling is there's the Commonwealth of Australian Government's waste export ban um, that currently is in place for glass and for mixed plastic. So previously that material was, or the plastics were sent offshore, um, that now has a ban on it. So it needs to be processed within Australia. So we currently send to um, our material to South Australia, but the state and federal governments have combined to provide funding for facilities to open up in Perth. So we're looking to see um, processing facilities for mixed plastic and other plastics coming online in the near future. Um, and as you can see from that chart there, used tyres were previously exported, very often used as um, uh, in, in cement kilns uh, overseas as an energy um, source. Um, and in 2022, um, things like PET bottles, which is your soft drink bottles, your water bottles, um, HDPE, which is milk bottles, like plastic milk bottles, they'll all be banned from being exported unless they've been cleaned, chopped up, washed, and turned into a, a form that can be used in manufacturing new products. And in July 2024, mixed and unsorted paper and cardboard will also have a ban impacted on it. So coming back to FOGO uh, and um, Pure Earth and uh, Gold Organics will talk further more about the science behind this, um, what happens to it once it's passed through the system. So if you start at number one, that's the FOGO is received at the um, SMRC's facility in Canning Vale um, and um, it's screened. Um, we take out any contamination. It then goes off for mixing and preparation uh, to one of the facilities. And it's further composted. You can't make a compost just out of FOGO. It needs additional materials added to it. It needs pasteurizing for a lengthy period of time to turn it into a fit for purpose product before it's finally screened um, and then sold in retail markets throughout Perth. And have got the video that we can see up. And we have got the video to show you how this works. So I'll just let Jared take control of the, uh, the hot desk and do yes. that for me. Yep. Okay. Fruit scraps go into the kitchen caddy and then into the FOGO bin. The FOGO bin is collected by a waste truck and transported to the SMRC's Regional Resource Recovery Centre in Canning Vale. At the FOGO processing facility, the raw FOGO is emptied onto the tip floor. It is sent through the shredder to gently break open caddy liners to release the food content. It is then screened to remove any unwanted contamination. The trowel separates it into two piles, under 40 millimetres and over 40 millimetres. The over 40 millimetre component is left to break down for another 24 hours, sent through a picking line to remove any contamination and then re-screened. The pre-processed logo is then loaded ready for transport to our composting partners, Pure Earth and Go Organics. At Pura, the FOGO material is mixed with other components such as garden organics, chicken manure, and other organics. It is placed into windrows, covered, turned, and aerated for four to six weeks. The material is then screened into different components and blended with other material to make a range of bulk products including landscape mix and premium mix. When the FOGO material is transported to Go Organics, it is unloaded and then put into windrows where it is aerated and turned to allow composting at 60 degrees Celsius for eight weeks. The compost is then screened, graded and sorted for application. Ready to use product is bagged by an automated process and 
transport it to retailers ready for sale and use. Our FOGO waste has now been composted and has gone full circle. The FOGO derived products are great to grow veggies in the garden. Perfect. And yes, that was my voice doing the overdubs. <laughs> All right, leave it back to Tim. Thank you, Jared. Seamless. Okay, so. Um, Picture tells a thousand words, so that short video gives a bit of a, a description of the process flow that I hope you found useful. And as I say, Paul and Joe will talk a bit further, further a bit more about the science. Um, is my slide going to? Okay, um, greenhouse gas emissions. Well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, food waste um, and organic waste um, traditionally has been placed into landfills when that material is placed into a landfill um, and gets covered over, it goes into an, an anaerobic condition and it produces methane gas. And that's a, a greenhouse gas that's 28 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Now, modern landfills have gas capture systems, but they never capture it all. They might capture 50 or 60% and the rest gets vented to atmosphere. So a significant driver for not only dealing with the um, uh, pollution that can arise from a landfill is the greenhouse gas pollution. And landfills currently generate about 2.5% of Australia's greenhouse gas emissions by this solid waste disposal on land, and it's all the organic material that currently goes in there. So by not only using the FOGO material to grow new crops in that are then turned into food that are then we buy in the supermarket and so the cycle continues, it's also a way of mitigating greenhouse gases. From a recycling perspective, um, the SMRC's achievements over 20 years have been quite significant. Um, we've diverted more than 1.8 million tonnes of waste from landfill. Um, we've abated 600,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide from avoiding that material going to landfill. And as you can see, there's some equivalence there uh, as to what that might look like. We've processed 2.7 million tonnes of household waste and produced 1.2 million tonnes of products that have been turned into new products for further reuse. So, and I think the issue to understand is as well is the going back to the export bans is um, the price of virgin materials. If we talk about plastics, for example, plastics are derived from fossil fuels. So from the oil and gas industry, uh, oil is not only used to turn into petrol to drive our cars, it's also used as a uh, product um, to make plastic from. The price of virgin material has been going down and down and down as more capacity in the oil and gas sector has come online. So recycled material is now finding it very difficult to compete with it. So we need the correct um, understandings and the correct uh, policy settings to actually make the use of recycled products competitive in the marketplace. So that's a really big challenge that I think is a useful avenue for research, particularly in academia and for students to look through. So I'm going to finish up now here and just a bit of a call to action. If you want to know what does go in the right bin and some tips upon how to live more sustainability, please go to Recycle Right website, which is recycleright.wa.gov.au or download the app from your um, onto your smartphone and it will be able to tell you which bin to put which things in. I'm now going to pass back to Jared, who will conduct the rest of the webinar for you. Thank you. Awesome, thanks for that, Tim. Let's finish up, stop sharing here. It doesn't look like any questions have come through yet, but feel free to um, type through your questions as we um, get along with the presentations. So, yeah, thanks again, Tim. So now we're going to head over to Pure Earth. So Paul and Bill at Pure Earth, if you guys could just share your screen, please.
Let us know if you're getting that, Jared. Yep, um, I'm getting a, an, an Outlook um, window at the moment. So you just need to um, get up the presentation there, yep, PowerPoint. I've got it on another screen. Yep, so you're able to click that one. Yep. Um, if you just hop back, I think it was the other one you, you needed to, to hit, to click. You just might just need to close that window or just minimize it. Right. Yep. Try again. <laughs> right. Up. How's that? There we go. That's the one. Perfect. Thank you for that. And welcome all. I'm here with uh, Paul Curtis, uh, the director of Pure Earth. Uh, uh, and Pure Earth is a uh, wholly Western Australian family-owned business. And uh, it's fair to say that Paul and um, the Pure Earth uh, team have been on this journey for, for decades. Um, and um, we'll talk to you uh, about, you know, where, where we're at at the, at the moment and a little bit about um, where we're going in the, uh, in the future, I guess. Okay, so in relation to, uh, it is Science Week, and in relation to the science of composting and how it works, uh, it's fair to say that the Pure Earth process is considered best practice in Australia. Uh, they, uh, the Pure Earth process uh, ma manufactures compost on a, on a sealed concrete surface, uh, and then once the, um, once the material is laid out in the windrows, it's fully covered. Uh, and the, uh, the windrow is made of selected blended organic and processed green waste to balance the carbon and uh, nitrogen ratios. The, uh, the, the concrete pads have aeration pipes in them uh, and, they all, and the covers have extraction uh, pipes running from them. So air is forced through the, uh, through the pile for the duration of the process, which is, uh, has been mentioned is around about the six week uh, time um, and the, the, the air that's in, extracted takes away the volatile organic compounds, uh, odors, and the like, and it takes those to a biofilter on site, which effectively removes the odor and, uh, and uh, emits clear air, clean air. Um, underneath the uh, covers uh, or within the pile, there are probes, and these probes monitor oxygen, temperature moisture and pressure to ensure that the air is getting through. And those monitors send information through to a, PL, a, a, a PLC, which uh, is uh, located nearby in a, in a power shed. And that sends the data through to the office computer where the information is stored and available for staff to see and adjust the process as necessary. And, it, and you would appreciate in this day and age with smartphones, Paul and his team can actually remotely uh, monitor that, whether they're on site or off site from their, uh, from their smartphones and, and make adjustments if and when necessary. Uh, the oxygen level is set at a particular uh, point. And uh, if the oxygen level drops below that uh, minimum point, the PLC will start and the aeration fan will, uh, will start to, and raise the oxygen level. Um, and the same goes with the temperature. If the temperature goes above a certain limit, the PLC will start the fan to cool the windrow down. And this is important because we need to ensure that we don't get spontaneous combustion occurring. And the windrow is held above 60 degrees. Uh, that's uh, Fahrenheit here in Australia, Celsius, sorry, Celsius here in Australia um, for more than a week to ensure uh, pasteurization. Um, effectively, the process is aiming to um, and designed to mimic nature by keeping the microbes uh, at an optimal level for breaking down the material. And we also add organic activators, which also speed up the process. And after the process uh, of pasteurization is complete, the windrow is then removed and stored for maturation, screening, testing, and then loaded onto trucks and sent back to Pure Earth 
Perth operations for blending and distribution to, um, to the various outlets. So a bit more about Pure Earth. Um, it's fair to say that the vision of, uh, of the Pure Earth organisation is to affect positive sustainable impact for, for customer businesses, to affect positive sustainable impact for the Pure Earth business, and to affect positive sustainable impact for the community and environment in which we operate. The objective uh, it could be described as driving industry development towards the circular economy. The site is located uh, in an area known as Watadding, which is towards Northern out of Perth, the other side of Mundaring. Uh, and the operations occur there on a site which is within a, 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 an operating farm, which is owned by the, uh, by the family. Um, and the site is fully licensed to DWR regulations. Uh, that, that picture there is basically um, it is, uh, the uh, Fogo being uh, taken into the mixing, Fogo material being taken into the mixing shed for blending. More on that later. So the, an overview of the composting process. We've got the incoming materials as uh, have been mentioned. Uh, the FOGO material collected from throughout the SMRC uh, member councils. Uh, importantly, there are other organic wastes from various customers. And it's worth pointing out that the Pure Earth business is just not based on manufacture of materials related to FOGO. FOGO is an important part of the business, but the Pure Earth operations been um, on foot for, uh, for, for over a decade. And um, FOGO is a, is a reasonably recent, but important uh, inclusion in that portfolio. Uh, the, 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 the raw organic waste is, is ground, uh, taken into that shed as per the previous uh, picture and it's blended with uh, liquid wastes and other organic materials. It's then placed on those composting windrows, the concrete pads that I mentioned before, um, and it's monitored and maintained as far as the oxygen levels and the temperature and the moisture are concerned. Uh, once that uh, part of the process has been completed and the covers are removed and the material is uh, mechanically moved to the maturation area, we were again at it, its it stockpiled for a period of time before being screened and loaded out to, uh, to, to market. So the outputs from the overall process, uh, Pure Earth manufacture compost products that are at minus eight millimetres, and that's the products that exclude FOGO, and that's the core business. The, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the business, that the, oper the products that have been manufactured over the, over the last decades. Um, there's also the compost products which incorporate FOGO in the current day, screen to minus eight millimetres, and they include approximately 20 to 30% FOGO. Um, and uh, also uh, there's a material amount of material that doesn't meet that eight millimetre screen process. And there's a pile there of uh, material that has been screened out because of the fact that uh, it has contaminants. It's, it's over eight millimetres. And a large percentage of that, I would suggest to you, is organic fraction um, and may be uh, suitable for uh, composting and manufacture of other soil additives. However, that would be sub subject to further processing. Importantly, uh, the Curtis family own uh, an associated business, and this business has been in operation for something like four decades. It's called Little Loads. Uh, it's a, a largely a marketing and distribution business. If you went to the site, you'd see a landscape yard, a, a nursery type yard. Um, and that's not their sole outlet. They also have a network of other nursery and landscaping yards that they uh, deliver to. They also have established uh, strong uh, markets in the agricultural sector and always willing and ready to set up arrangements with uh, suppliers of raw material uh, who might be interested in taking back 
the, the finished product for application to parks, gardens, green, green spaces, um, whatever as, as you like. And picture there is um, uh, a typical example of a bunker at the uh, Little Odes uh, site in High Wycombe. And that material that you're looking at there in that bunker is, um, has FOGO derived material in it. Okie dokie, moving along. Uh, there have been some trials and tribulations over the time. Um, the business continues to man manufacture the boutique range of materials that exclude FOGO, um, which use, it also uses waste from breweries, fruit and veggie from outlet, from supermarket outlets, grease trap wastes, etc. And those materials being readily available and are suitable to the process and approved under the license. And they help to uh, balance the appropriate carbon and nitrogen levels. Um, found since, um, since the inception of the process, the initial FOGO trials uh, have led to a point where we're utilising 20 to 30% of the FOGO material in the FOGO derived compost. Um, the contract with the SMRC has been on foot since, the two, since 2019. And we continue with uh, ongoing. Stop. 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 Sorry. Huh? <coughs> That's telling me I'm running out of time. Okay, where to from here? Um, discussions are underway uh, around export arrangements for certain boutique products looking at the fact that the government is um, promoting the adoption of the third bin. Uh, so um, there's going to be a lot more supply of this material around between now and 2025. So uh, expansion of the site is um, under serious consideration and, and planning. Our plans are afoot. We need to go through planning and licensing approvals. There'll be capital works um, involved. And importantly, before, during and after that need to secure additional input volumes. So that's as I have it. Jared, happy to um, take question and answers now or subsequent to um, further presentations as suits you. Perfect, thanks for that. Um, yeah, we did have a couple of questions come through the chat, um, which we've already started answering. So basically they were just to do with bioplastics and also FOGO messaging. Um, so just to reiterate, yep, um, basically when it comes to bioplastics, um, they are not to be placed in the FOGO bin. They, they have to go into the general waste um, or that you can, if they are bioplastics, um, they can be composted through right solutions. Um, and also in terms of the FOGO messaging, yes, it is consistent. So um, for the likes of Bayswater and Bassendine, um, the same rules apply for FOGO um, and it, it is consistent throughout WA as well. Um, so, yeah, thanks for those questions. Um, just having a look through. That looks like it, it's, it's it for now, but we'll, we'll have more time for questions and discussion at the end as well. Great. So thanks for that, Paul and Bill. Thanks, Drew. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Jared. No worries. So I'll just get you guys to um, stop sharing your screen. Thank you. All right. And now over to Joe Kalachi uh, at Go Organics. So Joe, if you don't mind just sharing your screen. Can you see that? Perfect, yep, awesome. All right. Well, thanks, Jared. Thanks, uh, SMRC, for the opportunity to present today for this webinar. Um, as uh, my name's Joe, as uh, mentioned by Jared, I'm business development manager for Go Organics. Um, Donovan Farrell um, and the Farrell family, uh, they own both businesses, Go Organics and Brunnings, as you can see on the screen. Uh, Brunnings is a national business, and Donovan is the WA director for the Brunnings business now. The Brunnings focus is predominantly retail um, for garden and compost products. You'll find their products in Bunnings, Spud Sheds, Coles, Woolworths, Big W's, uh, most of the major retailers. Um, and Go Organics is the business that um, is the composting 
business that produces the composted products. Um, Brunnings has been around since 1863. The Farrell family uh, bought the WA um, arm in 2008 and Go Organics was established in 1994. And once again, the Farrell family uh, wanted to vertically integrate their business. So they bought the uh, works approval and land out at Jinjin Jin in 2012 um, and developed the site that's um, currently Go Organics. A little bit about our current operations um, and where we're headed um, with our operation. Um, the, the, our license uh, through the Department of Water and Environment is currently at 29,500 uh, tonnes of organic material. Uh, we've got our works approval that's been in place for the past three months um, for expansion to 49,500 tonnes. Um, the, the process for that, uh, we building a, another hard stand, which is a 20,000 square metre uh, outside hard stand. Uh, it's about one metre thick with uh, clay, gravel and an asphalt layer on top. Our land has a natural fall of 4%, which uh, works well for us because we have to capture all the water, uh, leachate water that's generated on our site into dams. Um, and we reuse that water at the start of the process um, when we're composting in, in our initial mixes. So it gets recirculated through. Um, we conducted a FOGO trial in 2020 um, to prove that the process that we have on site can process FOGO. Um, we obviously um, process other organic material as well through agricultural inputs um, like chicken manures, cow manures. Um, we've got a large bird and cow population around us. Uh, we also take um, garden and green waste from the metro area and process that into our mixes. I should say also that we're located about 15 minutes north of Jinjin off um, Brand Highway. Uh, the official suburb name is Boonanaring, um, but uh, most people would know Jinjin. This slide here, uh, we are currently working on another works approval to expand our site to 120,000 tonne per annum. Um, and what what that predominantly is, is additional hard stands. The, the gray shaded hard stands that you can see are our current hard stands um, under our 49 and a half thousand tonne capacity. And the two unshaded are what we will need to expand up to the 120,000. Now our process is very similar to um, the Pure Earth process. Um, we receive material um, in the trucks from SMRC, the decontaminated FOGO. We put the material straight into our forced aeration shed. It's an enclosed shed that um, pumps air through the floor, through the pile to heat it up and uh, maintain um, temperatures for pasteurization. We also capture that air um, and runs through a filter to reduce odor emissions. Now our sensitive receptors approximately one kilometre away. Um, we're in a fortunate position of not being um, in a highly dense area. Um, so we, we still have to make sure that we reduce our odour, uh, but it's, uh, our neighbours aren't very close to us. So that's, that helps. Um, once the FOGO has gone through the uh, pasteurisation process in the enclosed shed, um, that's a two week process. We remove that uh, material from the shed and we form outdoor windrows. The, the windrows are on our um, asphalt hard stands and we'll compost those for anywhere up to 12 weeks on the outside. Um, we turn our windrows weekly um, to maintain um, the temperatures um, where we need them. And also we add additional moisture where required as well throughout the process. Once the product has been composted, um, we will grind that product um, into a smaller fraction. Um, and post the grinding, we will screen out the product to a minus 10 mil 
um, fraction um, and any oversize will be put back through the process. Um, as mentioned, um, it'll, it'll be recomposted ground and then screened so we can extract the maximum amount of organics out of the stream. Once we've screened the material, um, we will blend with other um, inputs as necessary, depending on the, the product that we're producing. And then once blended, uh, it goes into our um, bagging machine through a hopper. It's an automated robotic machine. Uh, as mentioned, our main market is retail at the moment. Um, so you, they predominantly go into your 20, 30 and 40 litre bags for the retail market on pallets. Um, and then from the bagging, they go straight out to um, the retailers for on selling. In terms of our product quality, um, we utilize a management system. It's called the Ashul Management System. It's an Austrian based um, composting system. Um, it offers um, cradle to grave tracking of um, materials coming into our site and going out. Um, also allows us to input um, our temperature readings, um, pH readings, and also moisture levels. Um, we input turning, screening, the whole process is recorded in the actual system um, and it facilitates our um, certified products to um, AS4454 standards. The FOGO, um, we will be including that in our closed loop system. And as mentioned by others, the, it's a really composting is a good example of a circular economy, whereby we take agricultural inputs, greens, food organics, they're mixed together. Um, we pasteurize and then mature the product. We screen, grade, and then send the product out to market. Now that can be retail and also agricultural and, it, and it's one big loop. And then obviously people grow um, their plants, um, farmers grow crops, um, feed livestock, and um, all those materials come back through the um, compost loop um, and, and the cycle just continues. One of our main focuses outside of the technology to actually compost organics um, has been to develop further markets for FOGO because um, we're very conscious that existing markets will take up a portion of um, the FOGO that's coming online. But with all the Metropolitan Councils expected to be uh, rolling out FOGO services by 2025, um, we feel there's a need to establish broader markets to be able to cater for um, that volume of um, waste coming into the uh, FOGO waste, sorry, coming into the organic stream. Um, so we've got a current uh, research project um, that's been facilitated by the CSIRO and it's in partnership with Murdoch University. Um, the project's been headed up by Dr. Richard Bell. He's a professor of sustainable land management at Murdoch and um, one of his students, Dr. Kartika Pradeep, um, they will be taking samples of um, the clay, the FOGO derived compost and the sandy soils that are uh, the predominant type of soil around certainly the Jinjin area and, and across the broader Perth area. Um, and they will be doing greenhouse trials to determine the best mix of FOGO derived compost clay and the sand in order to produce a high performing, a high performance um, soil, sorry. Um, things like nutrient water holding retention. Um, and we're also looking at building the carbon into the soil. That's where the clay is very important. It acts as a, a structural piece in the um, soil to hold on to carbon so we can uh, sequester carbon out of the atmosphere which is um, an, an important topic going forward. Um, beyond this project, um, we are also uh, engaging in other trials, um, and that is predominantly to uh, grow crops on our land, 
crops such as lucerne. So our intent is to use the high performance soil product that we produce from our current trials and then grow the crops. And through the Brunnings business, we have a market for the mulch um, that you can buy a lucerne mulch, hopefully in WA very soon. Um, you can buy it over east. Um, we'll be using those crops in, in that product um, as well. So uh, that's part of our market development for products. Our current products, we blend up to about 30% into our garden soils, potting mixes and garden composts, um, which you can currently buy through retailers. That's all from me. Awesome, thanks for that, Joe. So I'm just gonna get the chat box up again. So we did have some more um, questions coming through um, and some more clarification provided just on bioplastics. So basically they are a problematic item for us at the moment, um, with, especially with our pre-processing. Um, the moment it's really hard to tell what is plastic and what is bioplastic. Um, and so if we start saying yes to bioplastics, you know, that can cause confusion among residents. So perhaps if we can get to a point where we have a single stream of compostable products that are um, certified compostable, um, that makes our job a lot easier, you know, saying yes to residents, yes, um, compostable coffee cups or all coffee cups can go into the FOGO bin because we know that they're certified um, compostable. Cool, so I'm just having another look here. We also had a question about um, hard to get rid of contamination. Uh, yep, okay, so there's another question on hard to get rid of contamination. Um, so, yep, it's mainly things like glass um, as they can break, break into small pieces, uh, but they are still screened out um, during the pre processing and in further screening that is um, being undertaken at, at Pure Earth and Gold Organics. Um, just to clear that one up. Cool. So that's it for the presentations. Um, you know, we, we've still got a bit of time here for more questions and discussion. Um, if for those still still watching, if you want to take yourself off mute and, and ask any more questions, feel free to do so. Or type your questions into the chat. All right, well, if that's it for questions, um, it, we can call it there. So thanks again to all the presenters, um, Paul and Bill at Pure Earth, Joe from Go Organics, and of course, Tim, the SMRC. Um, and thanks for everyone attending today. So yep, happy Friday. Happy National Science Week. <laughs> thanks, Jared. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Thank Thank you, Jared. Thanks, thanks, to the SMRC. Thanks, everyone. And recycle right. <laughs>